the next pile that I'm going to take apart. This is the Daytona. Finely tuned engine bay. I've already got this mount apart. And it kind of flopped around and fell. So that's good. That means the engine's going to fall the rest of the way when I finish taking the mounts out. And hopefully just fall on the ground and get out of the way. Along with the transmission. But I'm reckoning I probably have to take the wheels off and take the uh, CV joints out. Or the axle shafts out to get it to come the rest of the way out. So to take this out, I reckon you've got to take the cross bolt out of here, and there's an up and down bolt in here too that comes out, like right in there. Well, you can see it. Well, the nut's got to come off. The bolt stays in, I guess. If it's welded in there or what. You can see the round thing, the head of the bolt, or the stud or whatever it is. There it is. So that's got to come out. And then down here, I think the way this comes apart, I've got my alternator sitting on it right now, is that take the nut off of this hick of a jig down here, get that bare stud there, and I'll work that bolt out of there and that transmission mount flops out of there. And then, allegedly, according to the manual, uh, this here is another transmission mount. That nut's got to come off and I guess this bolt's got to come out of here somehow while you're holding the thing up because it's going to fall out under the dang ground and bust your whatever you got underneath it. So that's allegedly how it comes apart. But then I can't find anything back there. I gotta chop it off north of the communistic converter and uh, that'll be about it. So if you've never seen this before, this is my old mega squirt set up. Got the uh, you know, fresh relay there for the uh, called it an ASD relay. There's my GM 4 pin HEI module. I used Gepco, a blue individual shielded, fancy, expensive, like $5 a foot audio cable that we threw away at work to uh, make this go. That's the, it's yeah, real pretty, yeah, nice. Anyways, so to connect that to the rest of the stuff, the distributor burned out, and I didn't feel like buying a new module, for, or a, a new pickup for it, so I made my own out of this fine turdliness here. So I used a case bracket, or a case blank out of a computer, and a piece of PVC pipe, and a generic A3144 Hall effect sensor. And this one is kind of cool because it lights up when it's near a magnet. So I just kind of stuck four magnets in rapid succession to the uh, uh, pulley up here. And uh, it ran. It ran really good until that HEI module burned out. And then uh, I accidentally left it overnight with not quite draining all the water out of it, it cracked the water pump housing. So I got a brand new water pump housing and a brand new water pump, but then I just sort of lost steam on it. I lost the bolts and the spacer and stuff. Whoops. <clears throat> that that creates some problems. So uh, and then kind of ran out of steam on it. So there there it sat for a couple of years, and then some neighbor complained. It doesn't move. Uh, yeah. I want you to mind your own business. You go after them guys up the road that are selling dope. God forbid. No, they're dangerous. They don't want to go after them. They go after me instead. <laughs> so anyways, so I think the manual says there's some kind of a dog bone or something out back here. But I think it means this one over here. And I think once I get this, uh, that there, and that yonder that's already loose, loose, take some wires out and some cables and stuff off of here, then that should just pull out. Or it should drop out, I should say. I wonder, too, if I can get enough slack on it to make it, to pull the axle shafts out of it. And, uh, well, no, I need to pull the axle shafts out of the wheels anyway, or out of the bearings anyway. Yeah. I'll burn that bridge when we get there. Uh, the next thing, yeah, i got to chop it off at the communistic converter right there, the pipe. Don't come and steal that, it's empty. Previous owner made sure of that. <clears throat> all right, what else do we got to do here? Those brake lines down there that are busted off, <coughs> gotta just take them all off the bottom of the car, which is going to be a lot easier when it's sitting on a truck frame because it's going to be three feet off the ground, minimum. <laughs> yeah, you want to make it hard to work on? I'll show you. <coughs> Ouch. So yeah, it was kind of cool. This thing ran really nice, too, with that GM module on there and the, you know, whatever the hell that coil's off of. I don't, I don't know. I got a coil from, random coil from 
from Napa that I can't remember what it was for, but it worked for this application. It works with the GM 4 pinner, and uh, that's it. Oh, yeah, the, that uh, proportioning valve, I think, is a piece of junk. So I'm going to get rid of it and just run straight out of the master cylinder to the front and back brakes. And then uh, <clears throat> if it gets irritating enough, I'll put a proportioning valve in. And here's all my gross mega squirt wiring. I never really did finish it up, but I just kind of left it there because we had other problems with the car that precluded me running it. But that's all right. I'll put it on something else. I still do have a good working mega squirt. I'll probably chop this wire out here just because it's good wiring. And this stuff's like five bucks. Well, it's probably ten bucks a foot now. And our dollar's not worth as much. Yeah, this kind of this little sensor I built is kind of neat though. It uh, just, just stick it in there somehow. I zip tied it to a case blank and stuck some magnets on there just so I could adjust it. Then uh, just put four magnets evenly spaced. I counted the teeth. I'm pointing at the teeth, but I can't point with my phone. There we go. I counted the teeth. I think there's like 40 teeth on here. So there, uh, one, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten. Ten teeth per magnet. Stick it right on the two, and then uh, set that up so it's got a bright, like super obnoxious bright green LED in it. I might do a demo on it one of these days, but not today. Then that just senses a magnet pa passing by it, and it uh, tells the mega squirt. The mega squirt tells the injector and the ignition to fire, and away you go down the road. And uh, hopefully, it keeps doing that until you get back home. I'm thinking, just maybe. I might start manufacturing these and selling them in a, maybe a little bit better case than that. Because those are kind of cool. And I mean, it's got just the same exact sensor as everybody else uses in their uh, Hall Effect sensors. And it, it, it's designed to be in a distributor in a hot engine. So being out in the open is probably better for it. That might be one of my long-term goals here. It, it was a pretty cool little setup. I mean, it, it was ugly, but it works. It ran. Well, there we got it. So in this mess here, I noticed that the engine sort of offset toward the passenger side, which is sort of a good thing, because, no, that's not part of our project. Uh, that's not part of our project today either. Uh, here we go. This hair thing, this engine is also offset to the passenger side a little bit because it's uh, four-wheel drive and they had to get the, when the Chevy motor was on there, they had to get it out of the way of the four-wheel drive. This is the frame that's going on. This is actually really neat. It was a good good choice and good choice of how I had it set up because the, it rises up in the back just exactly how the Daytona frame, well, framey looking thing underneath it does. I might have to cut a little bit out of here, or I might have to do some creative mangling to get it to fit into the bumper, or just maybe put this below the bumper and just have the car up higher. But that raises other legal issues that I'll have to deal with. Uh, particularly in Ohio, it says that you're not allowed to have anything. The floor of the vehicle has to be at maximum four inches above the frame rail. Now, we've got some getting away with it room because that's got its own frame rails built in. But I'm going to probably build a frame rail in between the, the real frame rail and the unibody frame rail just to be on the legal side. And they also say that the, the bottom of the bumper for a passenger car must be at maximum 22 inches from the ground. And that's obviously not going to work back here. And they say the bumper has to be attached to the frame rail. So what I'm going to have to do is make an auxiliary frame rail Make a Y-shaped frame back here, cut the cut into the bottom. You can see I'm pointing there, and uh, extend that out straight. Extend that out straight, and then hook the bumper up to that. I'll probably make another bumper like I did on my big old fancy D100 there. <coughs> I've already got a little bit of a notch right there to chop into. Yeah, I'll probably have to do a little better than that. Well. It's, We'll see. I'll burn that bridge when I get there. <coughs> I 
I'm hoping this thing's big enough and ugly enough and obvious enough that nobody rear ends it anyway, but if they do, I want them to encounter some resistance before they damage my stuff. Because I don't like people running into my stuff. Because insurance companies never give you what it's worth or hell, don't, they don't even want to give you enough to buy another one. <coughs> Stop. Lawyer time. So that's that. And I'm going to just, uh, once I get that motor and transmission out of there, take this over in front of it, pick it up by the beams up yonder. We got, ouch, I don't trip on it. Ooh, nice moon. So we got these beam looking things here. There probably won't be enough to pick it up, but I'll tell you what will is that great big old beam there. I got a crane. Oh shoot, I gotta go to a garbage freight yet and get my, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, beam trolley crane thing. Yeah, so I can, I've got the crane, I just gotta get the, the trolley thing for it so I can stick it up on that beam. And then my, my big old good chain I got with my motor for 35 bucks. The chain was worth more than I paid for the whole pallet with the engine transmission and chain on it. So I figure I'll pull this forward, I'll make a couple of adapters to rig into the strut towers, pick her up a little bit off of the struts, so they sort of drop out of there, and then rig it, rig chains to it, up to the main chain, and just pull up on it, and just start sliding the, the uh, frame underneath it. And I think once I get the frame part way underneath, of course I'm going to have to take the hood off, but I don't want to do that until I've got the motor safely set aside where it can't get rained upon. Because that is still a good motor. <sighs> so I'm going to pick up the front end, start sliding the frame underneath it. I think I can pick up the back end with my one ton engine hoist, because I'll probably have to take some junk out of there, because there is some junk in there. I'll just pop up the hatch, prop that up, and uh, find a spot in the bottom to grab onto and grab her and pick her up. Or jack it up or whatever, because I've got these 4x4s four that'll hold the back end up. They, I don't think they'll hold the front end. Well, I bet they will hold the front end up when there's no motor in it, because this car is 2,500 pounds wet with the motor in it. I'm guessing with those 500 pounds of motor and transmission and hundred and some pounds of axle and hundred and some pounds of wheels off it. It'll probably be like 1800 so I could pick the whole thing up with my engine hoist if I wanted to, which I won't. <clears throat> so I got these two big old 4x4s. Four four. One of them's like 8 foot and one of them's about 6 foot. I figure I can run probably both of those across the back and just keep picking her up until I got her up high enough to jam the frame underneath it and then let her down on that. Plus, my buddy with a wrecker wants to come over and just sort of pick the whole thing up and shove it down on the frame whilst I take the undercarriage off. Well, there you have it. That's about what we're doing. Hopefully, I can get this motor and transmission out of here without too big of a fight. Find a good home for that. It's a, the transmission slipped a little bit until I put some Type F fluid in it, Ford, and it uh, just sort of started to cooperate. Actually, the thing ran really good toward the end, and it just sort of, uh, I started, it started burning that, well, it, it burnt the cheap ignition module out, and I just, then I, it set overnight, and it froze, and I didn't let all the water out of it like I thought I did. Oops, oh well, but the block's still good, the block holds water, just that water pump thing doesn't. I guess if anybody needs a 2.5 engine and a 3-speed automatic, uh, here, here should be. Well, that's it for this update. I shall see you later.